Hello there and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. My name is Valur Grettisson. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. This here is my good friend Polly. She's a chief of morale officer. Uh, today we have a lot of news, of course, uh, and we are going to tell you all about it. But first, of course, uh, a small advertise. I uh, want to tell you a little bit about uh, wool sweaters. Uh, this is Gunnar. It's actually <laughs> made by the Hand Knitting Association in Iceland. Uh, all mothers in Iceland, they basically make... Uh, I got my first wool sweater when I was like, I think six months old. And I get every one every year and I lose it every year also. <laughs> uh, but it's like, of course, not everyone has Icelandic mother, but this is like UNESCO stuff, quite nice. Uh, and if you want to buy it, you can always find it at our homepage and find more information uh, on the uh, down there. Uh, it's also like, it's, it's incredibly funny, like there is a very strong society in Iceland of like uh, middle-aged women, Icelandic women, that are like, they are like hawks uh, watching the news and they always see like when like uh, politicians or whoever are like <laughs> wearing wool sweaters and they then they discuss it in these groups and they even try to remake it. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, but uh, we are going to go into the news. A lot of things have happened and yeah, here we go. So first, uh, earthquakes, they are back, like I said, last week, uh, and it's, it's quite disruptive. Uh, we've had a lot of earthquakes in, uh, around Keilir, which is north of uh, Geldingadalir. How do you want to do this, Ars? <laughs> it's impossible to get over the traffic here. Now we have to be mindful. Uh, but the thing is, we have had uh, well over 7,000 earthquakes since the 27th of September, which is quite something. <laughs> but keep in mind that uh, like 90% of these earthquakes, we haven't even felt them. Uh, most of these uh, earthquakes, oh, could it? most of these earthquakes have been like under three uh, in magnitude. But uh, a lot of them have been well over three. Uh, the strongest one has been around 3.7. Ah. Uh, geologists, they are afraid that there will be another eruption there. And they, when I talked to you last time, they were about to go and, and see some, uh, what do you call it, like uh, uh, satellite uh, images of the area. And the area, it doesn't look good, to be honest. Well, it doesn't look good, to be honest, because uh, if the eruption will happen, uh, and we're not quite sure if it's going to happen, uh, then we're basically uh, going to have a much, much, much more powerful volcano uh, than the, the other one. This means that if it will come, a lot of, a lot of noise here, can't even hear myself. Sorry if I, you probably won't hear anything, any of it. Yeah, I've never been to this area. They're building this right now. There's a hotel here. Uh, and it's going to be interesting, I guess. So, uh, there is gonna be, if there's gonna be eruption in the area, uh, we know that it's gonna be 10 times more powerful than the eruption right now. That means that it could be uh, from 80 cubic meters per second to 130 <laughs> cubic, 113, sorry, cubic meters per second when it comes to uh, the volume of the lava that will come out. This is quite something uh, because uh, this means that uh, there is, like, unlike, like I explained last time, unlike uh, the area that the, the eruption is right now, there won't be any valleys to, like, uh, take 
all the lava, all this volume of lava which is there, which is quite something. It's like 4.6 square kilometers, the, the whole area, uh, and the volume of the lava is like, uh, I don't remember what it was, but it's, it's quite a lot. Uh, but if this eruption will happen, it means that uh, uh, it will reach the, 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 uh, our, uh, our main road that connects the Reykjanesbær and the international airport in Iceland uh, to Reykjavik. And this is much, much more dangerous than ever uh, when it comes to, for example, the other uh, volcano. Because the other volcano, uh, the only infrastructure it's threatening is more or less just uh, a road that not that many use. It's called Suðurstrandarvegur, or uh, like the South Beach Road. And it's, uh, it's a convenient road, definitely, but it's far from being essential when it comes to uh, any uh, transportation in the area. But the, the, this road that it uh, could, could threaten now, that road, if that is not working, that will po impose a lot of uh, very difficult tasks for the government, as well as for the people that live there, as well as for us that want to travel perhaps uh, from Keplavik to, to uh, like Reykjanesbær to, uh, uh, to Reykjavik. Uh, keep in mind, Reykjanesbær used to be called Keplavik. So sometimes I accidentally uh, say that, <laughs> but now you know. Oh, she is energetic today, isn't she? Hey, and she never fails. Well, oh. <laughs> Gert. Ah, and Sun, and Sun is back. Did you notice? We have had a very, very rainy uh, few weeks uh, and very stormy at the same time, and it's not quite over yet. The, the weather here has been so bad uh, that we even had uh, mudslides in the north. Uh, perhaps you remember mud, the mudslides in Seydisfjörður last winter, uh, but this is becoming frequent. And the thing is, mudslides in, uh, in Iceland, they are not very common. They're actually just not common at all. <laughs> but uh, this has sparked uh, a discussion about global warming, because uh, Iceland, sorry. Because Iceland, of course, in the, in the winter uh, should be cold, the, the earth should be frozen. And when I always laugh, like, like all the Nordic countries, like oh, global warming means like one degree hotter in Iceland. Nobody's really complaining about that, but it doesn't really matter. Like it matters in that way that if the Earth in Iceland is not frozen, we will have different types of catastrophes like this. Uh, but uh, thankfully, uh, few, if any, infrastructure has actually been destroyed in these mudslides. Uh, but there is like uh, there are six uh, towns, like farms, that have been evacuated because of this. And uh, there is like a, see, and we call it like it's, it's a state of emergency in the area. So it's uh, nobody has died, uh, no houses have gone onto these mudslides yet, uh, and thankfully. Uh, but uh, it's we know that there was going to be much rain and even storms at the end of this week. Uh, so th there could actually this could actually escalate and could be like the theme of this winter because this winter also is starting quite. Um, roughly, uh, so, and, and Icelanders often see this as like an uh, indication of this, that this winter will be hard. Uh, and the, the harsh winters in Iceland are, they just make everything so much complicated. <laughs> so, so we don't want that. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, 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 yeah, so I just finished with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, the eruption, if the eruption will be in like close to Kailir, uh, it's, it's also uh, not unlikely that that uh, eruption could threaten my hometown, Hapnafjörður, uh, but it takes a lot of time for the lava to get there. Uh, but it could get there. For example, where the eruption is right now, there is absolutely no chance of the, that eruption to reach the, any town anytime soon. And before it came to Hafnafjörður, it had to destroy at least one or two other towns before. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's going to happen. Uh, also because, uh, of course, the, the eruption in Faradalsfjall, it is like, 
It's dormant right now and it has been for two weeks at least. So, <clears throat> and to politics. Uh, after, after the politics, uh, after the elections, uh, we, of course, had these three parties that are in coalition and that are, are still the strongest ones uh, in, in Iceland. Uh, they are now trying to form a new coalition, but they haven't yet for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, they are, of course, just discussing uh, how to formalize that. Ole! How to formalize that uh, in general, uh, they are not sure, but they are on their way uh, to make a, like a deal, like how, what they should emphasize on and so on. But uh, right now, uh, it's also complicated situation because of course, we had these odd elections in the Northwest, you remember? Uh, there was not enough security when it came to the votes and so on. And now a lot of MPs have actually pressed charge because, because of this both uh, to the parliament as well as to the, to the police. Uh, so the, the, the case is being investigated, uh, and there is a new committee uh, with uh, m members of the parliament, actually, <laughs> which makes it a little bit even odder. And they are now investigating how this could have happened, what to do, and so on. And this also means that the elections aren't quite yet done, because there are there is a... There is a chance that we need to re-elect, actually, in this, this one con con this constituency, <laughs> right? Anyways, uh, you understand me. Uh, I just can't say the word correctly. I saw a, a great... Uh, there was something comment commented about it, and it was actually pretty good, but I just... Can't, I, I, I seem not to be able to say that word correctly. Anyways... Uh, so that's, like, still going on. We're not sure, like, how that will evolve. Icelanders are not thinking much about this. They feel like this is more or less over. Uh, also, it's, it's, a, it's very pretty evident what the voters wanted. Uh, these three biggest parties, they won uh, like a, it was a very big win for them. There, was, there is no doubt what the, the, the voters wanted. Uh, also, the minority is kind of like, uh, they, are, they are not like uh, strong after this and they, there is nothing that indicates they will, that they will get any stronger in this. And they are even like, like even in this discussion, they are like, this, they could be better, to be honest. Uh, so, and also, uh, and this is quite uh, grim, grim news, actually. Uh, the culture industry in Iceland is decreasing rapidly. Uh, there was like, a, there was a, a paper that came out today uh, where uh, a union in Iceland uh, was uh, doing the math when it came to the culture industry in Iceland, and they say that it has retracted, uh, like the yeah, experts, experts say, assess that 25% fewer jobs are in the culture industry now compared to 2008. And also, the salaries in the movie industry in Iceland has shrunk by 41%. Uh, it has gone down by 26% in the music industry. Uh, and the, the salaries uh, altogether uh, by art, artists in Iceland is now one of the lowest uh, in, in, the, in the country. Uh, they have gone up to, like, the salaries have gone up by 49% the last uh, past years, uh, but the wage index has increased by 96%. So they are like with almost like half of the salaries that probably I have. <laughs> so it's like a, it's a it's a serious situation. Uh, the culture is uh, of course we do culture. We, we have our magazine. So if you want to be of course uh, a subscriber for that, you can uh, you, you can do that also. You can see what's going on. But they are in a bind to be honest. Like this is becoming a very bad like harsh industry and not the one that. Well, if you're smart and you do not want to be poor for, <laughs> forever, this is not the, the industry you will perhaps go into. Uh, also, the union is pressing the government to have some kind of a future vision of like how to uh, make this industry stronger, because uh, the best things that have always come from Iceland are is culture uh, as well as volcanoes, I guess. Uh, but uh, nature in, in general, and also nature is like a huge part of our culture, uh, and nobody tells uh, people about culture other than artists and so on. So you can just imagine like uh, Sigurós or Björk, for example. You can find very strong like Icelandic elements in her. Uh, you can even like hear a, like a, 
like how a volcano could sound like in her sounds and so on. So it's like a, it's a serious concern, to be honest. And uh, we hope that this could be like uh, that the government will listen to these uh, these words because it is it is something, right? So uh, that's it for our uh, newscast today. We are doing uh, at the magazine right now, and uh, we are doing the layout and so on. After it not be doing this, what he's doing now, he should actually be taking photos for me and, and, and doing the layout. But he never listened. He always wanted to do this newscast. <laughs> so you have this one this week, uh, and we won't be back until next week. Uh, but uh, then we will be back with, with some, a lot of power. We, can, we have news for you also about our YouTube, channels, uh, YouTube channel and everything. So we are like, you basically just uh, keep keep, uh, keep posted and uh, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button also, uh, so you know exactly when we're coming back. Uh, but right now I just want to show you actually Asian. It's not as white as it was yesterday, but you can see like the winter is like slowly creeping up on us. You can also see this, the mountains over there. It's like uh, the winter is basically all around us except in the city right now. But uh, we can feel it's, it's the, the air is getting colder, the weather is getting worse, and, uh, and the days are getting shorter also. So, and of course, Polly is making friends. <laughs> so it goes. <laughs> so, see you later. Hi, hi. hi <laughs> no problem. You do, you, yes. Yeah, you do me a favor, actually. <laughs> So we've been watching all your shows. Oh, really? Yes, oh, thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, we're telling them the newest news here. Yes. Where are you from? You're English? Or? Yeah, yes. from the UK. Okay, where from the UK? Uh, Bristol. Bristol, okay.